So we talked about fill hole, we talked about mesh, we talked about non-watertight, we talked about extreme cases, which is this where you'd actually have to go in and patch, edit, all this stuff together. And we talked about overlapping bits versus Boolean bits and why to do it that way. I think that's all I have for you. Do you have any questions on this stuff so far? I think we've got, oh, I'm five minutes over, but that's not too bad for me. <laughs> Usually I'm 20 minutes over. <clears throat> any questions on that so far? The question is, why did I switch from using maximum edge, edge length to minimum initial quads? But I showed you my way first, which is I set the density, I set the edge length, and then I set the edge to surface. Um, everything else was zeroed out, including quads. Um, and when I was going through this uh, with, uh, with Scott uh, Davidson from McNeil earlier, he said, you know, everything's great, but did you know that <laughs> um, that all you have to do is this and this? And I said, geez, I didn't know that. And so I experimented with it a little bit. And to, and to tell you honestly, in the, in the week when I was prepping this, as I've started using just these two settings, I find that it's significantly more elegant than my, you know, my setup where I was setting this and I was setting this and I was setting this and I was setting this. It's really only two things. This is file tolerance. Boom. Forget it. That's it. Set it to file tolerance. You're done. All right. Run it at zero. Right. And we, and we talked about what happens, right? There's only 24,000 polygons in this thing. That's not enough. So I need to crank it up. There's only two ways to do it. One is to control the minimum edge length, right? Which is going to force it to make a denser mesh. But Dale, who's the guy who wrote this tool, and he's way smarter than I am, so I'm going to listen to what he says, um, says to mess with this setting instead, which is a much more elegant way to get to a denser mesh, which is the goal here, right? So we want, as we ratchet this up, now this becomes a very easy thing to control. Even my tiny art school brain can manage this, right? So now we're at 111. If I go 400, it's a very easy thing to iterate and see very quickly what you're going to do without having to screw with any of this other stuff. So, so going forward, these are the only two settings I'm going to use. And I've actually sent a couple of parts this way and it works great. Yeah, the question is, is how do you determine what the maximum polygon count is for the printer? Call the guy and say, hey, I'm going to send you a part. I need it to be printed on a blank. You know, if you're printing it on a MakerBot, it's you don't need as many polygons as you do as you're, if you're printing to a you know a, a $250,000 high def 3D printer, right? So call them and say, listen, I need a print. This thing's going to be a doll head for Disney. It needs to be shiny and clean, and I need to be able to see the wrinkles in the eyelids. And they're going to say, okay, we're going high def SLA here. Uh, and you say, okay, great. What's your maximum polygon count for something that is about three three inches by three inches or two feet by two feet or six feet by six feet whatever the case may be just say and you can determine that you know if you really want to get nutty if you want to know exactly what your cube is pick the thing run the bounding box good grief run the bounding box command and it'll put a box around it and then just measure this Right? Just put a dimension on this and say, okay, this thing is going to be is going to be three point oh five inches by one point two by you know whatever. This is my cube. This is how big it's gonna be. It needs to be high def, it's a Barbie head, it needs to have wrinkles in the eyelids. You know, how many polygons can you guys handle on this? And they'll say you know what, if you give me anything over 500,000, I'm going to decimate it. So don't give them more than 500,000, give them 499,999. Because what you don't want, what you don't want is for them to process it because they're going to make different judgments about what's important than you are. How do you edit a tensile membrane or mesh surface? So you're talking about a single, a single thickness? Okay. Um, by definition, that won't print. But let's let's do something nutty here. All right, let's and do that, and let's do that. All right. 
So let's say we've got something like this. And I'm assuming that this would be like an architectural canopy of some sort. And let me get rid of my curves. So let's mesh this. All right. So let's just preview it. And in this case, you know, we're going to crank the quads up. Because it's rectangles. Printers like squares. So in this case, I'm going to crank it up more. We're still only, you know, we're still only a thousand polygons. So let's go, let's go crazy. All right. So that's, that's getting better. It's starting to square up a little bit. So I can't print this, right? Because there's 222 naked edges and non-manifold edges. And they happen to be all the way around the entire thing. What can I do? Well, the first thing you could do is if you go back to your original surface, before you did this, you could do you could do a solid offset. And let's offset it to the inside and let's say 0.08. In this case, this is we're dealing with inches, so this is 80 thousandths. 80 thousandths is an okay wall thickness, but depending on how big this thing is, um, I like to try and be in the point. 150 range for wall thickness if I can and so the very first thing I would do is this then mesh this okay this will now print but let's say we don't have that option let's say this surface is gone and all we have is the mesh well we can do a mesh Oops. Offset mesh, and in this case, it did that, but I didn't use the setting to make it connect, so let's... Here it is, duh. Sorry, this was on my other monitor. If you click the solid box here and then say OK, it will actually offset it and connect it. Now this will print. All right, so let's do that again just to do this. All right, so this box pops up. This is our offset distance. I can play with this here. All right. And then our increment as far as our offset distance. And solid gives us a closed mesh. This is cool. Here's one thing that I want to show you about this. And I used to, this, this used to be a cheat that I used a lot. If I had a mesh that was, or a, an object that was garbage and I needed to make wall thickness. Actually, if it, not even if it was garbage, but say I needed to make wall thickness. And I didn't want to go through the hassle of, let me put this at the origin so I'm not flying around like a crazy person. All right, so say you wanted to create cheater wall thickness, right? You've made this crazy wall, you've made this crazy part, and you wanted to make wall thickness out of it. If I mesh this, actually, the very first thing I want to do is, is cut a, a tiny hole in it. And the, I'll show you the reason that I want to do that first uh, in just a second. All right, so I'm going to cut a tiny hole in it, someplace that's not going to be visible. I'm going to mesh this, and I'm going to just do something small so that it goes quickly, Boop, like that. All right, so open mesh, right? Won't print, 64 naked edges, fails, sell open mesh, and I don't have wall thickness. But I want wall thickness, but I'm not skilled or patient enough to actually go through and create the wall thickness. Mesh, offset mesh. See how it's going in? If I make solid, watch what happens. Because I cut this hole, boop, boop, look at that. Now, if I were to clip this, no, oh, let me trim a mesh. Anyways, if I were to split this in half, I have to do this with the with the mesh trim and the mesh splits down here. But if I were to if I were to cut this in half, and if I just did this here, we'll do this. We'll do a mesh boolean. Okay. You'll notice that I have wall thickness in here. So this is something that I used to do all the time. I would do I would do this. 
and you can you can boolean a uh, you can boolean a mesh object with a poly surface object. You just have to use the mesh boolean tools. So <clears throat> what I would do is I would copy this. So if I needed to make two halves, this is a little cheat that I used to do all the time. Um, let's make sure this is here. So say I had to split this and I need wall thickness. I already did my offset, but now I need to split it so that I can make it in two halves. So I'm going to copy this and just leave it on the clipboard. And then I'm going to Boolean subtract that. All right. And then I'm going to paste my new part. I'm going to hide this mesh. And obviously I would make my cutters beforehand so that I knew where they were, but let's just assume I did this correctly, which is almost never the case, unfortunately. And then, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. oh wait, I've copied the wrong thing. Darn it, sorry. Let me go back. Do, do, do. All right, so here's my mesh object, and I'm going to copy this. All right, and then I'm going to make this, and I'll do it right this time. And I'm going to copy and paste this, and I'm going to move this down so that it lines up just like that. And I'm going to hide this. All right, so using the mesh booleans, I'm going to cut the top of it off. Now I'm going to bring back my mesh. Oh, did I not copy the mesh again? All right, I think you get the point. Anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna spare you watching me struggle through this. So basically, what you do is you copy paste the mesh, you cut the top off, you paste the new one back, you cut the bottom off, and then you end up with. Let's assume this worked right, shall we? And. Mm -hmm you end up with your two halves that you can then print with wall thickness. So that's a cheat that I used to use for stuff like this. If I needed to do wall thickness on it, I would actually go through and mesh it. I'd cut a tiny little hole in the bottom of it, and then I'd offset the mesh to whatever my wall thickness was. And then I would split the thing down the middle and then end up with my two halves so that I could get a wall thickness part. Okay, that's kind of a long answer to the tensile membrane question, but the, the, the short answer is you have to get some thickness to it. Um, and it depends on how big your thing is, right? If it's six inches long by six inches long, you don't want it to be three inches thick and you don't want it to be, you know, 0.1 millimeters thin. You got, it's got to be reasonable. You know, printers like kind of 80 thousandths to 150 thousandths for wall thickness, depending on what it is.